Hello and welcome. My name is Markus Erdorf and I'm safety consultant at Lloyd's. Our topic today is what does CE actually stand for? Yeah, if you're talking about CE marking, then we usually think about the safe machinery. But it's not only the safe machinery, so there are some more things where we find a CE marking. So for example, on a glass of water or on toys or also on, on an ID card for the hotel. And so the question that comes up is, what does CE stand for? And actually there are different directives who are regulating the CE declaration and one of them is the machinery directive but we also have the measuring instrument directive, we also have the radio equipment directive or we have the safety of toys directive. And what are the letters now meaning C and E? So they are coming from, a, from the French language in the abbreviation is Conformité Européenne and in the end, it's a declaration by the manufacturer that a product complies with all relevant European legislation or directives. What it's not, unfortunately, it's no quality seal. So that's the problem that we sometimes have. The people are thinking about safe machinery, but it's no quality seal. It's only the declaration of the manufacturer. So in, it's, in the end, it's a little bit a word of honor of the manufacturer. And what's also quite interesting, it's only relevant in the European Union because it's a directive of the European Union. And now the big question of course is, when is it allowed to affix the CE marking? So we can answer is this in a very simple sentence, if all requirements of the machinery directive and if applicable also further directives have been met. And the main topic here is the risk assessment. And in the risk assessment, the manufacturer is looking for all the hazards and hazardous situation in all phases of life of the machinery. And then he also has to do a risk estimation according to the risk parameters. So that means the severity of injury, the duration and frequency of exposure to the hazard, and also the possibility of avoidance. And last but not least, we also then have to do a risk reduction. So that means measures according to the hierarchy. So at first we have to change the design, then we can do technical measures like safeguarding, and then we can do information of use. But we have to follow here the rules. And then we are allowed to do the CE marking. If we look directly into the machinery directive, then we will find this information in the article 5. And here it's telling us the manufacturer has to ensure that all essential health and requirements, safety requirements have been set. And that means our risk assessment and risk reduction. Then he also has to do some more things. So we need the technical files, we need the instructions, we need the assessment for conformity and we need the EC declaration of conformity and then in the last step we can do the CE marking or we affix the CE marking on the machinery. So in the end of course more or less the CE marking stands for our safe machinery but we have to keep in mind it's only done by the manufacturer, manufacturer so we have to always keep in mind that maybe if he did it not correctly or the risk assessment was not done correctly, then in the end it's maybe not a safe machinery. But of course, in the end, it should be this way. So I hope uh, you got some new informations and if you like our video, then please give us a like and you can also subscribe for our channel. Thank you and goodbye.